nights and dinners with all family coming in. And so we're staying with the, uh, with the grandkids. You're laughing. Um, you've been there, right, every day? And so uh, I've got to tell you, for the past week, I'm in the shape. Many of you write me and say, hey, Doug, I can't follow this diet. One thing. Um, I've been good with the diet, <clears throat> but I have an exercise. Normally, I'm trying to do you know, 50 push-ups, then my other work. For 22, 25 minutes, I do a great workout, and I'm sweating. I have not done that in one week, one week. Uh, I don't feel great. I still feel pretty sharp. You get the 70-year-old guy today. You don't get the 50-year-old guy, you get the 70-year-old guy. So be with me today, be kind, be calm. So much I wanna talk with you about today. And most importantly, can I tell you where my heart's been this past couple of days? Thank you for the many thousands of you who have seen the show uh, from Tuesday and sent it to your friends. Uh, our numbers are growing constantly. Uh, and I owe you that thanks. What I want to do today is do something I'm not finding anywhere. I have 30 good friends who are sending me, you got to watch this, Doug, advance it to 22. You guys are getting them, right? The COVID, biggest cover-up, biggest conspiracy in the world. I don't know. Uh, and I just stopped. So if you're one of them sending me all these, know that I can no longer look at all of them. Do I think a conspiracy exists? Okay. To the extent that we don't know much in medicine, no. I'm still, my poor wife, my friends, I am still convinced, who was it? Was it Albert Einstein that once said, we don't know one one millionth of one percent of one thing? Um, big medicine has let us down because 70 years ago they opted to go the way of profit over cause. Okay, we don't know the etiology. There's no shortage of medical charts. I would guess in the US, 50 million medical charts have at some time in their history, a physician has scribbled etiology unknown. What that means is, you know, her eyes twitching, she's got ringing in the same side of her head and her ear, etiology unknown. We have no idea why it's, of course you don't. You were trained, you were trained, let's see, eye and ear. Here's an ear script and an eye script. Now go to the pharmacy, see me in two weeks. If it's working, we'll fill it again. And we'll keep doing that for 17 years. Today, we're not going to go into all the controversy and conspiracy and cover-ups that purportedly are out there about this virus. Rather, I thought, and, and I really thought about this the other night when I was laying in bed. What you guys need is, is an understanding. When I used to sit with these doctors' patients for you know, 10 hours a day, some of you have written me. You were Dr. Weekly's patients you know, 20, 30, 33 years ago. Wow. And you knew me back then. <clears throat> what you need is a general understanding of, Doug, as we age, <clears throat> what happens to our immune system? Or, Doug, I'm only 30. And, you know, I had a child, and ever since then, my health has been right here. What's going on? Because, folks, you bring up those two words in a physician's office, immune system. Okay, get her on a drug. Um, and I used to be like that. Fifty years ago, I really thought, because a doctor, you're running a fever, you're talking like that, you're feeling miserable, and a doctor palpates here, here, top of your legs, lymph nodes, are they swollen? I kind of thought that's where my immune system was. Then along came a guy named Frank Jordan who worked with me for, well, 22 years it's been now and who taught my audience what the immune system really is. What in the world has happened to our immune system? But first, I promised, and some of you are holding me to this, thank God you are, I promised I would take a few minutes and answer some of these great questions that came in the other day. And since I have an hour and a half today, just bear with me as long as you can, because I have some mind-blowing things for you today. Carolyn asks, how much niacin do we need to take daily? Well, um, when I was working with the doctors, my recommendation was a loading dose of 250 milligrams uh, for people with hypertension, with high blood pressure, and then gradually take it up from there. Now that's where the doctor and I sat with their patients and 300, this, you have to remember this was 40, 45 years ago. Um, let's take it up 300, they're doing well, stabilize it, leave it at 300 milligrams. As I recall, the RDA recommended daily allowance of vitamin B3, niacin, 
of 15, 16, 18 milligrams, something like that. Uh, but a larger dose is sometimes used for hypercholesteremia, for high blood fats, for hypertension, and so forth. But now you know, Carolyn, those of you who are with me Tuesday, why? Why in the world would niacin work for illnesses? One of the reasons, and I'm convinced the major reason, is because it annihilates fungus. Same, by the by, with vitamin D3, sun, right? D2 and D3, particularly D3. Okay, uh, Julie said, how long does it take to get rid of candida or fungus on your diet? Julie, that depends on a couple of things. <clears throat> Who was that the saying, John, how deep is your love? Was that the Bee Gees? It depends on how, was it? How deep is your love? Uh, how deep is your fungus? I used to see people who literally, Julie, um, would come to see the doctors and they had psoriasis, bleeding, ugly, their backs, oh, their thighs, psoriasis all over the place. And Dr. Weekly would put them in a PUVA box. This is a, a you know, electrostat, a light filter box. And he'd give them a shot of cortisone. And he said, I'm losing the patients. They'll do this for a couple of months, but then they'll leave me because I don't have answers. And, you know, and we are in a position to help doctors not lose these patients. That's why David hired me in 1986, uh, to help him not lose patients. Sometimes, Julie, in, they would tell me in four or five days on this diet, uh, these things cleared up. Now remember, they were on a couple of antifungals also. Our first plan, because of hepatotoxicity, right? So it's liver toxicity. Our first plan was to get them off of the drugs when I would use herbs, thymol, carvacrol. You know, I, I would use her niece who came to see me and uh, it took her probably two years before she got over some of the worst symptoms I had ever seen. Uh, and so you just need to know, how deep is your fungal problem? I don't know that. But if you know, Doug, I've had these symptoms for 17 years. I want you to think back, Carolyn, to where, or I'm sorry, Julie, to where did you get in touch with it? The moldy home. That's it. Or lots of rounds of mold. Oh, dare I say, antibiotics, which are mold. Um, that's when my life changed. Think back, the terrain, we're now linking almost every disease with the gut, okay? So understand when this is bad, so is all of this. Great questions, thank you. How long does it take? If you don't have a life-threatening condition, if you don't have stage three, four cancer, advanced diabetes, lupus, any autoimmune disease, there's what, 150 of them or something, try the diet. You guys, try the diet. I'm going to teach you why in a few minutes. Okay, Beth said, I was diagnosed. Remember, we talked about carpal tunnel. I used to recommend vitamin B6, pyridoxine, for people with carpal tunnel. They thought it was tennis elbow. Uh, not wanting to be sued for repetitive motion problems, which was really the problem. Photocopying lots of articles from me, thick journals before the Internet. They told me I had to have surgery on my carpal tunnel. This is my friend Beth but gave me a treatment option of using ice every 15 minutes. My point, I have carpal tunnel, I've had this for years, says Beth, put ice on it every 15 minutes. We have a virus that may have mutated and formed a, a relationship, a genetic fuse with a fungus, or maybe not, maybe I'm wrong on that. We have a virus doctors don't understand. Am I shocked? Never. Okay? So they told you to put ice on it. Now, that was impossible at work. And also before KTC, Doug's information. I did ice, rested it, and it healed itself. Of course, that was also with a lot of prayer. Amen to that. Um, so Karen says, 10 days on your Kaufman 1 diet, my blood sugar were normal. I couldn't stick to the diet after 10 days. I felt sick, wanted to try it again. You might try using, if you're craving carbohydrates, either that your body telling you, advance to the Kaufman too. Try some beans, maybe a little more fruit, red apples, you know, uh, and see if you can maintain that diet. Especially, I didn't get this from you, Karen, but if you had, uh, you know, high blood sugar levels, and it's stabilized after 10 days on the diet. You want your blood to get back under 100, you know, your serum uh, glucose levels. So 
you might advance or try the Kaufman II and see what happens. Uh, last week, and there's only one or two more, and then I'm going to go to what I want to talk about today. You aren't going to believe this. Yes, you are. You guys have been with me a long time. Linda, last week, uh, went for a medical appointment, told the nurse practitioner I was in the process of using beta-glucan, detox cleansing system, and I was extremely satisfied and happy with the results so far. Oh, <laughs> John, I hope you have the time to listen to this. She said, oh no, that's bad for you and everyone. I told her to research and don't be so closed-minded and shook my head. I also gave her a copy of your book, The Woman's Health Problems, uh, for a Christmas gift. She never mentioned if she ever opened it. Uh, have to take our health issues into our own hands, young generation of health providers. Years, years ago, I met a man. He died, and his funeral was last week. He lived around the corner here. And I bought uh, this property, and he has a little tiny old wooden home that his dad moved into the property. Um, he passed, but before he, he went in for a physical, and they, uh, and he ended up dying a short time later, uh, maybe a year, John, two years at most. But I used to go shopping for him, and I couldn't believe what he ate, but I never, you know, I was just hoping nobody in that store would ever see me with, you know, this kind of food. He ate a lot of bread, had a lot of uh, soda pop, and so forth. But I kept, is a neat guy, and I kept him happy. The point I want to make is they moved him to a nursing home after a botched surgery. And he had a stroke, and he couldn't talk. And I got him, we always laughed how he couldn't see that much anymore, so I used these little 1.25s. So I got him a pair of bigger glasses, and I got him a Bible. You say, I handed that nurse practitioner your book. She probably threw it aside. And his sister told me, that he picked up that Bible and began reading it, okay? Was I glad I deposited that Bible? You will likely be happy, Linda, that you deposited that book on her. One day, even a nurse practitioner, deity, if you will, will pick the book up and say, what a joke, and start opening it. And she's going to make it through it. Many people have told me, that they gave a doctor, this was years ago, when I first wrote the books, 20 years ago, they gave a doctor a book, and uh, he looked at it quickly and threw it in the trash can. Doesn't hurt me, but that's pretty rude. Uh, okay, so I think you'll be happy you did that, and I'm glad to hear that. Beta-glucan, I'm so big on that. Uh, thank you, NSC beta-glucan. Doug, what do you recommend for sinus problems? Knowing the cause. Isolating the cause. And to do that, Sheila, you have to go back to when they began. Oh, no doubt. This began when I got married. We love antiques. When antique shopping filled it, oh, we have this old sofa, and every time we sit on it, poof, you get this little bit of dust that goes in the air. Um, and the house smells a little mildewy, our friends tell us. Bingo, bingo. Or I live in Chicago or surrounding areas. And I have a basement, and you know, when it rains, it pours, I go down there to do laundry. Folks, many of us had grandparents with homes like that, and we slept in the basement. We were three. We were seven. Now we're older. Mold doesn't go away when you leave the bedroom. We have a trapping system. It's called a mucous membrane, secretory IgA, coating our mucous membrane tissues. Vaginal yeast in women, nasal pharyngeal sinus, or nasal pharyngeal candida problems, Everywhere it's wet, intestines, bingo. And so just by leaving that basement or that home 10 years ago when you got married, the mold didn't exit. These are opportunistic organisms. When the opportunity's right, when's the opportunity right? I've been really sick, I got a lot of diarrhea, stomach problems, I feel I'm dehydrated, I feel so depressed. Opportunity, horrible for you and me, great for fungus. When you're down, they're up. Okay, good, good question. So sinus problem, Mayo Clinic said 21 years ago, almost all of them are fungus. Sad news, when you go to a doctor for your chronic sinus problem today, you're going on a medication that is not used for chronic sinusitis. It's called an antibiotic. Here we go, John. Yep. I was going to get a little more done here. Good uh, fighting, okay, Judy, Doug, fighting another infection, gum and teeth hurt, MSC, 
uh, MCS seems to be telling me I'm in trouble. MCS, uh, multiple chemical sensitivity. Multiple tells me I'm in trouble. Hated starting uh, non-penicillin antibiotics, but my heart was hurting. I notice new apartment has some moldy odors, but uh, mostly sealants and counters. Is infection caused? Is infections caused by mold? Uh, I think what she's asking here is, can my multiple chemical sensitivities worsen in the presence of mold? Document it in the scientific literature. Uh, thank you so much, Judy, and thank you all of you. Now, let me, before I answer your questions, I've got some important stuff to tell you. I came across, oh, there's so much. Oh. There's a couple of newsletters. You guys know me, so you know I subscribe to these. <clears throat> One of them is called All About Feed. Humans eat food. Cows, pigs, chickens, things we eat later, uh, eat feed. They're called feed lots, where cows eat, not food lots. And so I love mycotoxins, February 24th, 2020, All About Feed. Here it is, the World Mycotoxin Report, circa 2020. And I want to go now, here's Europe, here is continued Europe, here is uh, North America, Asia, so forth. I want to read you North America. This is from an independent company, but they took 20,000 samples in 2019 in 86 countries, and here's what they found in North America. Remember, North America is Canada and we here in the USA. The prevalence of mycotoxins has increased over the last five years. Folks, we heard we had an FBI and a CIA that protects us. Right or wrong, they know no sides. They protect us. We hear we have an FDA, a food and drug. I always thought food administration and drug administration. Because once you start drugging cattle and chickens, you, there may be a conflict there. Okay? Just saying. Um, Here's what this independent, I think they're in Belgium, uh, company found. <clears throat> the prevalence of mycotoxins, mycotoxins are poisons made naturally by fungi, has increased over the last five years in North America. Last year's survey showed a 90% DON, deoxynevalenol, let's call it, prevalence in Finnish feed samples that go to our cows and chickens and foods and so forth, with a maximum concentration of about... Uh, nine parts per million. Normal for human feed with this deoxynevalenol, it's also called vomitoxin. What do you think it makes the animals do when they get into it, right? Um, and normal is 1%. Approved is one or under percent. Here's 9% parts per million. Don prevalence in corn samples uh, followed uh, by fumonisin with 78% and xerelinol, uh, 55%. In addition, co-contamination is found in 75% of the corn samples in America. So I did a little study. I thought, I've got to help you guys. Here's what your doctor doesn't know. God bless him or her, folks. They didn't learn this stuff. This is a Belgian company you got to go to to start figuring these things out. I have been telling people for years, back, do you remember when we licked stamps and we licked envelopes? Did you know you had about a calorie of corn? So today, glue products are made with corn. We now know that we put, what, 5 to 15% corn in our gas tank. I have some cool old motorcycles, and I won't use ethanol in them. So I go to Walmart. Walmart has non-ethanol gas. Those of you who are sitting in your driveway right now have an old truck, like I do, or an old car you love, you got to start using, if it's the right kind of car, synthetic oil. That'll make the engine last a long time. And then putting, in my humble opinion, non-ethanol, non-corn gas in it. So go to Walmart. It's a little bit more expensive, but that old truck is, my son told me it's an 08 that we originally bought for him. And uh, he kept it as kids do for a year and wanted to trade it in. And I said, no way, I want that truck. So I've been driving that. Here's how we get in touch with corn. This is uh, CheatSheet.com, gas and oil. As a way to trim oil dependence in post-9-11 world and use up all our excess corn, the federal government actually mandated that we start cutting our gasoline with ethanol 
corn. I had no idea that's when it started. But I'm told by car guys, I have a lot of respect for and motorcycle guys, that it tends to eat up the, uh, the linings, all the tubes, and, and so forth. Of course, it's corn. I'd much rather put it in my gas tank than in my body, okay? Uh, I didn't know this. Gypsum drywall, chelation which prevents mold on drywalls, is made with cornstarch. It rained when we were building our home. Then we went in and put up, so all the wood's soaking wet. Then we went in and put up the wallboard, cornstarch. Do you see where I'm going with this? But it gets better. From plywood glue to Elmer's natural glue sticks to envelopes, corn is used in all of them. This is something I didn't know because I don't use many cosmetics. I'm one of the few guys, before I go on, they dust me. Looking at the ingredients in your makeup may reveal something called Z-E-A-M-A-Y-S. Z -E -A -M -A -Y -S. Though it sounds a bit exotic, it's actually a scientific name for corn. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. There are numbers of ways, uh, number of ways that corn is used in cosmetics. Starch, oil, meal, powder, germ, extract, gluten protein, kernel, acid, glycerides, and potassium cornate. According to Cosmetic Info, they're found in skincare products, hair care, bath products, eye and facial makeup, uh, lipsticks, and hair dyes. Corn, 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 corn. So I'm just telling you that. I didn't know this when I worked in dermatology with these doctors. First thing you got to do, ladies, if you have dermal hypersensitivity, scalp hypersensitivity, is don't wear makeup for a week. My wife is so beautiful when she doesn't have makeup on. But some guy must have told women, you know, a hundred years ago, man, you need makeup. Men aren't going to use it. So let's make, I mean, it's tragic that corn, 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 corn. If you notice atopic dermatitis, allergic dermatitis, or you know what, Doug, I, I, my lips have started swelling. That's a good thing if you don't have to pay for it. My lips have started swelling. And that's right. I bought some lipstick. Just think that way. Think about before you go to night, uh, bed at night, think about all these things. Think about corn in all of them. Some examples of makeup containing corn. Some examples of types of makeup that contain corn. Cleansers, protectants, conditioners, binders, absorbents, and abrasives. Powders, uh, water-based liquid makeup. Fresh vegetables. Now, I don't think this is true of natural grocers. That's We only buy organic when we go to... Uh, what do carrots, celery, broccoli, and pre-cut tomato products from your local grocery store all have in common? Corn-based processing aid made by Global Protein Products from Zion, Z-I-E-N, a principal protein in corn. It retards dehydration and oxidation, leaving the vegetables to appear fresh and fresher than they really are. Uh, let me keep going. Wax paper, wax cardboard, bioengineered bone and gum tissue. Over the past few years, this corn has gained popularity. In the biomechanical sphere, electrospun fibers become a scaffolding for biocomposite in bone tissue engineering and replacement in periodontal disease. So if a doctor says we have to build that up a little bit, a little bioengineering, corn. Splenda and equal which obviously aren't on my diets. You thought you were escaping corn by not sweetening your sweets with corn swirp, right? You're probably not. Both of these products contain maltodextrin, which is corn, a corn product, Splenda and Equal. Hand soap. At least 25% of the ingredients in many hand soaps contain corn. Windex. Varnish. Toothpaste. Next time you brush your teeth, notice how much it doesn't taste like soap. Between the flavoring and sweetness that come from sorbitol, it is a corn glucose derivative. So does your toothpaste have sorbitol in it? <clears throat> matches. Cornstarch is a common ingredient in the production of matchsticks. Now, I just left, you don't eat, you know, you don't eat paving bricks. You don't eat things like matchsticks. Paving bricks, coated aspirin. The Swedish coating on your painkiller is called cellulose acetate phthalate, corn derived. Aspirin. You know, they've always said, be careful swallowing aspirin because it can make your gut bleed. You know, we don't know. What do we hear? Hello, Corona. We don't know if aspirin's good for you. We don't know if it isn't good. When you swallow it, you're getting a little tiny bit of corn. 
tiny bit, but who takes an aspirin? You take lots of aspirin. Spark plugs. And then diapers, both normal and natural diapers use corn for its absorbent properties. With a little two-year-old, I have changed some diapers. And I gotta tell you guys just a statement. We men are told by urologists that if we're up at night urinating a couple of times, you know, let's get that prostate worked on, man. That just happens when you hit 50 or 60 years old. I lifted a diaper off this little two-year-old the other day as I was getting him all cleaned up, brushing his teeth and so forth, that had to, I could have done curls if I had two of them. Would have been a good five pound curl. That little guy laid there and urinated all night as all kids do. Does that mean his prostate is bad according to urologists? Yeah, we got to look at that little guy's prostate. Wrong. Oh, don't get me started. Okay, but diapers. Same thing two days ago. <laughs> do you believe how heavy yeah, their diapers are? With a two-year-old. With a two-year-old, that's right. Sam? His, uh, their diapers, John, they have this absorbent in it now. And I don't know if, did I ever tell you a story? I got in trouble one time. I was working on a pediatric ward in the Navy, and a guy named Danny and I, you don't want to wake those kids up, especially at night. And all kids, we had these doctors say every two or four hours you had to take their temperature, right? We didn't have these disposable diapers back then, so we'd cut a little, di all kids sleep with their rear end in the air, so we'd cut a little hole in the diaper, and you'd slip a thermometer in, right? Didn't wake them up. Of course, then the uh, hospital started getting nasty calls from the diaper companies, all these diapers. Okay, here's the mycotoxin. Got done with that. Okay, I got done with that. COVID, that's something I gotta talk to you about. Conflict of interest. Okay, so let me do it from memory then. Xerelinone is a mycotoxin made by fusarium mold. Fusarium mold is common, common in our states, greatest country in the world. It's common in our corn supply. The FDA is looking at uh, some of the mycotoxins made by corn, you know, aflatoxin B1. But this is in wheat and barley and rye, and I got to thinking, wow, gluten-free. Corn and sugar are gluten-free. So all of these doctors are getting this gluten-free diet kick going. Go off gluten and you'll feel fine, and I think you will for a few weeks. But you start loading up on corn and sugar. It doesn't have to do with gluten. It doesn't have to do with one of the proteins, gliadin or gluten in wheat. It has to do with you going off mycotoxins, so common in wheat and corn and other things. You switch over to corn and sugar. I love all this gluten-free stuff, corn and sugar and other things. In their defense, sometimes they do have some healthy stuff in there too. You just have to be careful. One of the, uh, I want you to study for women especially who are concerned, and I gave you this information in the women's book. Uh, so deox. Fusarium mold makes a couple of very, very toxic immunosuppressive byproducts. One is called vomitoxin, right? And the other is called xerelinone. Vomitoxin, to confuse we the people, has another name, deoxynevalenol. Very cytotoxic, very poisonous to your cells, very immune suppressive. And it's in our cereals, okay? When you combine this with what we're drinking in alcohol, um, with peanuts and pistachio nuts, they're now saying they're finding more and more mycotoxin in pistachios. I'm hard pressed to tell you guys that we weren't most of us sitting ducks for COVID-19 or whatever they'll come up with next, COVID-21, COVID-23. You know, we're on a cycle here and they seem to be doing pretty well with it. Um, you know, I don't want to challenge them on that. I'm just telling you, let me just read you about these mycoestrogens. Myco means fungus. These mimic, here is a fungus that makes a secondary poison that mimics human estrogen. What is xerelinol? Xerelinol is a synthetic, I'm sorry, xerenol. A drug company makes xerenol. 
why would a drug company make xeranol if it's a poison? It's a natural chemical, xerolinone, produced by the fungus fusarium. In vitro, outside of the body, in a test tube, xerolinol stimulates growth and replication in human breast tumor cell lines that are sensitive to estrogen at rates similar to those induced by the natural hormone DES that injured so many children 60, 70 years ago. Uh, estradiol and the naturally known carcinogenic DES. In 1981, the European Union banned the use of xeranol and other growth promoters in cattle farming because of their potential to cause cancer in humans. And in 1989, the European Union prohibited the import of beef from the US or Canada that used xeranol as a growth promoter. It's used as a growth promoter. Nobody sells a 70 pound cow. You want a 670 pound cow and this xerolinone, that's why they give the cows corn. Eat it up, eat it up. But now in North America only, European Union said, we're not going to allow, we think this thing is linked with cancer. In our FDA's defense, I think it was 1993 when they looked at it, you know, a long time ago, they said, no, it doesn't. Go ahead and clip it onto cattle's ears and they'll get big real quickly. I just need to tell you this. If you're eating a lot of meat, I'm a meat guy, but I think there's two kinds of meat. I like grass-fed, grass-finished meat. If you're eating a lot of cereal or breads or pastas, things made with wheat and corn, and barley, and oat, and rye, and so forth. If you're drinking alcohol on a regular basis, if you can't help, it's not you, it's something inside your head that tells you you need more sugar. Remember, in a human-fungal cell relationship, they're identical, human and fungal cells. They're eukaryotic cells, and they're identical. In a human-fungal relationship, the fungus takes over. Human is no longer at the top of the chain fungal cells begin taking over. If you find yourself craving sugar so that you can't handle it, look at chromium PIC, P-I-C, uh, chromium PIC, uh, maybe a couple hundred micrograms a few times a day. I always talk to your doctor when I make uh, any supplemental suggestions. Chromium PIC helps get you off of some of the cravings of sugar. I think we're lowering our own immune system. I think when this new flu virus came on board, um, we were caught with our immune systems down because of our diet. Um, and so just know that when it comes to COVID, I can't make any more recommendations. I'm so tired of looking at this stuff. John, do you have that little ear you showed me the other day that you pulled off of uh, Facebook or one of those things? This kind of summed it up for me. When you're tired of hearing about corona, put a mask on it. That's, that's about where I am. That's about where I am. I know this is your venue. When a, when a coronavirus vaccine is ready, who gets it first? I read you this the other day. I won't repeat it. But 60% of physicians said, oh no, 60% said, okay, I'll take it. 40% said, not me. And the majority reason was kind of, we don't think the science is there yet. May I remind every physician who was in the 40% that said no, you've been pushing a flu vaccine in the last 10 years, its efficacy, how reliable was it, went from 19% to 60%. And this year, I think they said 45%, less than a coin flip. You're pushing that, Doc. Could we put the brakes on in the defense of maybe small children? Could we put the brakes on until we know a little bit more of science than these people were marching out on TV who said, and I want to quote it, I want to get it right, says the big boss, Dr. Fauci, there is no guarantee that vaccines will be effective. Duh, 19 to 60% one that we recommend every year older people take. He said, I'm cautiously optimistic. Well, that's great. The vaccine induces a suboptimal response. The receiver may be injured by it. We hope, we hope, we hope. Not that they'll be injured. We hope that the vaccine will come and that it will work. 
Do you have a guess as to how many companies are working on this in the interest of helping we the people, of course? There's no monetary objective in mind in these companies. There are now, I believe, 118 global companies rushing to market. How are you going to get into the FDA if you've got the best minimal side effects? I don't know. I don't know, folks. I have my own thoughts on this. Uh, how do some drugs get approved? So we just, I'm just telling you, watch out for grains, alcohol, antibiotics. Watch out for mycotoxins in your diet. During this time, even though I'm up a lot at night and, uh, and uh, spending a lot of hours. John, do the kids, do your grandkids like Blippi yet? B-L-I-P-P-I? -P -P okay, well, Blippi, I put on a Blippi the other day. There's Cocoa Melon which is little babies and moms and dads sing to them. It's kind of cute. And I put on Blippi, this wild man who runs around, you know, tractors and fire trucks and so forth. It's kind of 120 million YouTube views. A hundred, and he wears an orange hat and orange suspenders. He's probably 30 years old, and he sings and he dances and so forth, and kids love. I'm in the wrong field. Dougie, I've got it. See you guys later. No, I wouldn't do that. Okay, now, um, we got problems. Point is, it takes 10 to 15 years to get a vaccine to market unless there's some incentive. We heard the other night that this vaccine legally can be mandated. Can you legally mandate? There's no guarantee it's going to be effective. It may injure people taking it. We hope it works. Can you mandate that, folks? One of my concerns, I'm not an anti-vaxxing guy. One of my concerns is, will it induce more injury or worse than this virus that came on the market a couple of months ago? I was so proud, it looks like my little town is back at it. And no longer am I going through the middle of town with all the stores and shops and restaurants angry. I used to sit in that one mile run of the old downtown area for five minutes, just moving along slowly. I now am high-fiving every car and every truck I see. I'm glad to be back at it. Okay, now you guys turn. I did pretty good. I did pretty good. Okay, you got me for an hour. Let's do this. There's something about you guys wake me up. May I just say if Angeline Lawler is watching, congratulations. She became one of these certified assistants now who can work in, uh, and I hope she does, she's that good, uh, work in a doctor's office. I love the idea about getting counseling credentials, food, nutrition, supplements. There are people offering herbal, I went through a, I don't know, six month course after Dr. Weekly died. I thought, oh no, I can't get Diflucan, Nystatin, Spornox, Lamisil, Ketoconazole. I can't get any of those anymore. I wonder if plants or herbs have antifungal properties. And it was great. Get that education. If you've got a big heart, you're looking for another career, and there are millions of Americans who are, I would find most doctors are going to resist you. They are doing just fine. Take this prescription. You're going to find, I found a dozen, two dozen in my lifetime. Now they all want me. Um, Angel is gonna, Angeline is going to find someone. And what that someone will learn is Angeline's only been here six months. You're kidding. She's made me $180,000 from being here. Um, and Angeline needs pay. You know, work out a deal with the doctor. Can you help a doctor maintain uh, his patients? I did it. I did it 45 years ago in L.A. I did it 30 years ago, 35 years ago out here. You can do it. Doctors desperately need someone in their office to say this word. They can't say it, so you have to. Cholecalciferol, vitamin D3, sunlight, niacin, capricin, caprylic acid, right? Um, they don't know those words, nor do they know they're antifungal. They're busy writing prescriptions, right? So I hope we're going to see this huge turn. I think Mark Sisson... Uh, the paleo guy, I see him really advertising heavily for counselors, nutrition counselors. 
Um, and I'm glad to see that. Okay, here we go. Now on to you guys. Martine. Oh, did you read that, John? Martine, our friend in the UK. Um, I had my cancer test. Last time I heard from Martine a week ago, she had taken some tests to see if she had cancer. They're clear. They were clear. I've been prescribed Sporinox today also. Martine, high five. Martine, the UK is filled with good doctors. I used to be on God TV in hundreds of countries. I just couldn't afford with this, uh, with the advent of this viral uh, pandemic. Uh, I was limited in the amount of money I could spend, so I stopped on God TV. But there were doctors in Canada who were prescribing antifungals, or in Canada, in the UK, England, just because I was on TV talking about it. Become one of them, Martine. You had a scare, the worst scare people can have. And now you've got, I think, one of the best anti, I think one of the best prescriptive antifungals on the market today. See, I like onions and garlic and broccoli, and I like Brussels sprouts. Um, great, great antimicrobial properties. God gave us food. Congratulations. I'm really happy for you. Uh, Aurora, it's a pretty name. Doug, can you tell me what might cause head tremors and chills? Thank you for your response. Uh, John, do you have that list of mycotoxins are? I know you're busy in there, but um, do you, can you put that up? You got to read this, Aurora, and everybody. Mycotoxins are. So mycotoxins can cause cancer. Not all of them do, just a few of them do, maybe five or six. But as you go down, they're tremorigenic. They can cause tremors and seizures is number two. Wait a minute, corn? If it's impregnated with mycotoxins? Are you telling me, Doug, peanuts? Are you saying whole wheat? Yeah. Look at that list. The heart, the lymphatic system, the skin, the endocrine system. They're endocrine disruptors. Why is my thyroid misbehaving? Think endocrine disruptors. Mycotoxins are. The cool thing about that graphic, they're estrogenic. When I put that up to a group of doctors, I wish you could be little tiny people sitting on my shoulder watching. Uh, Doug, could you put that back up? Hepatotoxic? Nephrotoxic kidney? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything but the teeth. They don't know the single most important thing that you now know. Mycotoxins can cause thyroid disease. Very well documented. Mycotoxins can cause tremors <laughs> and chills. You gotta be kidding me. When, do you know what the Kaufman flu is, right? It's nothing like the corona flu. Uh, Kaufman flu is when those of you who are really riddled with fungus in your body, you start the Kaufman diet and you get sick and your nose starts running and you're chilled and you run a fever and you take a hot bath. It's like the flu comes on for a day or two. That's what we call a Herxheimer or a healing crisis. Um, yeah, fungus does that. So Aurora, think about the Kaufman diet. Think about the supplements we've talked here, a multi-B, maybe some resveratrol. Um, you know, uh, they're good antifungal supplements on the market today. If you have a serious problem, I would encourage you to do what I did decades ago, and that's talk to your doctor just like Martine did, and get Sporinox. Fungistatin stops it growing in your bloodstream. That's important. Thank you, great, great questions. John, you're right, when John brings all these out, he says, these are such great questions. You're a smart audience. Uh, okay, so Phyllis says, hey, Doug, I am taking O'Hara's, Dr. O'Hara's uh, probiotics, too, at bedtime. My question is, when's the best time to take poop doxilium? Sidebar for all of you who are new with us, both of these companies, Dr. O'Hara's probiotics and poop doc, right? What's his motto, the number one place for the number two problem? Um, is Scott, the owner's. Uh, company. They're both paid advertisers on my television show. Nobody pays me to talk to social media, and I like it that way. Um, so I can make recommendations. There are lots of good probiotics out there. There's uh, lots of good fiber out there. I'm always going to recommend these guys because I've vetted them, uh, and I know what they are, and I know they work. Remember what psyllium is. It's a non-digestible fiber, poop doc, non-digestible fiber. Why would anybody want that? For two reasons. Number one, 
most of these mycotoxins end up in our gut. The fungi and the mycotoxins end up in our gut. Psyllium binds mycotoxins, and I believe colostrum, mom's breast milk does also, binds mycotoxins in the gut and then enhances peristalsis. That's, ooh, I gotta go to the bathroom. And boy, do I know that now with these two kids in my house. Coco, I gotta go to the bathroom. And zoom, you know, off they run. Um, so psyllium is a good thing to take. I would, the way I take these, uh, I take two, uh, probably four days a week, two of Dr. O'Hara's probiotics after dinner. A couple hours later, I write, I read. A couple hours later, right before I go to bed, I'll take a scoop of poop doc, shake it up, and shoot it down. Okay, so the probiotics are now in the gut. They're living bacteria, they're doing their jobs, right? And the, uh, and the poop doc then absorbs the bad guys and out it travels, right? Okay, good, thank you. Uh, Kathy says, hey Doug, do you have anything that would be good for arthritis or gout? So five years ago, I saw an ad on TV. A fake doctor, just like me, a uh, paid actor, had a stethoscope around his neck, and he said, uh, you know, I, this ad is all about gout. Now everybody knows that gout is caused by uric acid. It's the beer drinker's disease. We get into yeast other ways, but that's one major way. If I had gout, I'd avoid bakers and brewers yeast. What makes bread rise, right? What makes alcohol ferment? Uh, I would do that. I think arthritis often, and remember, I'm not a doctor. The scientific literature does not say this. This is my guess, working with so many people with arthritis, rheumatoid or osteo. Mycotic arthritis, fungal arthritis, the scientific literature says is rare. Um, and yet, I've worked with so many people who had skin problems, and when they came back in a couple months said, look, man, I've never been able to get out of bed and do that in the morning. It works. I don't have any pain anymore. I think fungus causes huge problems inside and on the human body. Gout, I believe, is caused by fungus. Now, you're going to hear a whole lot of stuff. They're going to beat around that bush forever and ever and ever. You know, well, don't eat the purine high food. Oh. I'll never forget one time I went over, and my wife and I, I think we were dating at that time, went over to mom and dad's, and dad had gout. And John, we brought over fresh, organic artichokes. Man, I love, by the time you get to the heart, I still love our. And dad was such a cool guy, and mom was so great, and she said, oh, you brought artichokes. You know, John can't eat artichokes because he has gout so bad. You gotta be kidding me. Oh no, no, can he drink beer? Oh yeah, yeah, he can have two to four beers a night. Can he have arch? No, no. Really, much of medicine, big medicine, is diametric to where the truth lies. It's so amazing. Sure, John, you can have alcohol every day, lots of it, but don't eat an artichoke because that might make your gout worse. Unreal. Now that was, so we were dating, it was over 40 years ago, and that's still true today. If you have gout, the doctor who is nutritionally oriented uh, is going to hand you a list. We don't want you to, you know, spinach. Oh, no, no, we don't want this. Beer? Oh, sure, glass of wine, beer, these medications. Colchicine and allopurinol, the treatments, the two FDA-approved drugs that treat gout themselves are antifungal. Wow. Too much information, right? Okay, uh, Angie asks, thank you, you guys. Thank you for these great questions. Do you know every time I read a question here, do you know that there'll be 10,000 people in the next couple of days that will hear this question? And so thank you for all of these, and thank you, John, for getting them all to me. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Depending on how bad you have fungus, my friend wants to know if it's... Uh, no, I want you to know it's never too late to get this fungus gone. Is it ever too late to get this fungus gone? Gone is a relative word. Thanks, Cray. I'll be up front. Oh, okay. Um, gone is a relative word. Um, did I tell you that 
I think I had uh, COVID-19 on my birthday back in November. We had gotten together with the kids, grandkids, uh, their wives, the kids' wives, and so forth. And man, I got sick. Well, I fell off the diet. I had some uh, hot bread with butter. You know, I'm always, and I'm, I'm at the head of this thing. And I always think, well, butter, you know, butter has antifungal properties, probiotic properties. I'll put it on this great smelling bread. And the next day, I was so sick. Did bread prompt? Did you learn today that wheat? drove my immune system down, and then any opportunistic organism, like a virus, jumps on board. I don't think it's coincidental at all that I got this bad virus by cheating on my diet. Um, and so that you know, I think there comes a point in time at which we get back into these things. Halloween, what can a Hershey bar hurt, right? I'm a 170-pound person. That's an ounce. What's that going to hurt me? And if it were one Hershey bar, maybe not. I always tell my wife, this is the way we test these things, right? Go to a kid's house for Thanksgiving. We have a little wedge of pecan pie. We're going to test. We're going to see what level our fungus is. If I eat that pie, my bowels don't work for two days, my skin itches, I'm cranky. I had too much fungus in my system. Do you ever get rid of it? By the way, it's on board to finish you off. Mummies, you know, thousands of years old, when they took the olive leaves, it's called oleoropin in olive leaf, right? When they took the uh, antifungal, when they took the olive leaves off the mummies, their skin and facial features were intact. Fungus want, the deeper you dig, the more fungi and bacteria there is in the soil. Fungus wants nothing more than to be reunited with its family. Is it coinkadinky? When you die, they're going to dig a six-foot hole and put you in it. They win, you don't. So gone is the operative word here. Depending on how bad you have this fungus, is it possible to ever totally get rid of it? Some of the people I worked with, the doctor's patients, swore by it. I'd see them in stores from time to time, health food stores. And uh, this just happened a year ago or so. Um, a famous person here in Dallas, I was at Whole Foods Market uh, with my wife, and this lady came up and said, wow, Doug, remember me? I saw you with Dr. Weekly. Oh, yeah, how are you doing? And she, oh, um, okay, urticaria is what she had, hives. And man, they were bad, itchy all over her body. Um, and uh, the doctor used antifungal drugs. I used my diet. And she said, I probably haven't seen you in 20 years. And I just want to thank you. You know, I've lived with... So to the extent that she had a superficial or not a huge underlying fungal problem, just by working with her diet, you know, staying off alcohol, she said she does that, um, it's all fine. Deeper mycoses, people with cancer, people with diabetes, people with crippling arthritis, people with autoimmune diseases, I think it's going to take a while. Here's the good news. Can you retard a physiological illness? I think you can. I think you can put it on hold. The most exciting time when I used to work with all these doctors' patients was the first month. We'd have the patients come back in two weeks. You couldn't believe it. I felt like I scored a touchdown every day. They'd come in. They'd want to tell us, you know, this is amazing. Look at my skin. It's absolutely in great condition. I did what Doug said. I've been standing out in my little balcony uh, outside my master bedroom without many clothes on because all I get, or much clothing on, all I get is the sun coming in on me. Then I turn around for 10 minutes. That's helped, like the Puva box, right? Um, and then my diet and so forth, it's really helped. Then people, this is human nature, then people begin to fall off the program. Look at how pretty it is. Do I need to be on this program? To challenge is normal. I never called it cheating. To challenge is normal. Just like I did my birthday with that bread. I had to challenge it. And boy, did I go down quickly. Uh, so uh, the longer you're on it, the more it works for you. Okay? Do you think uh, different blood types might be more prone to fungus? Looks like A-type blood 
have more problem with uh, COVID-19. Any thoughts about that? Who is that doctor? I interviewed him on my, uh, uh, Dr. Diadamo. Wasn't that him? He wrote, eating right for your blood type, type O, type AB, AB negative, A, et cetera, um, have, um, you know, different, uh, uh, different uh, blood types, he says, should eat this diet. I never found it to be true. He's a great interview. Theoretically, he's right 33% of the time, uh, which reminds me, with my son out here, he got in my truck, that middle thing we opened, and he found my old dog tags from Vietnam. Mom gave me a St. Christopher medal, and then we had uh, two dog tags, and every time I took a step, it made a little noise, metal on metal, so I wrapped it with some white tape that I had in my medical bag, and uh, Evan found that. And uh, wow, man, that's 50 years old, 50 years old. So he wants to know if I can make two of them, one for he and his brother, for Christmas and give it to him, and I think that'd be pretty neat on their keychain. Um, this is really a good question, Becky. Should a healthy body be able to combat and fight, uh, fight most forms of fungus? Is this epidemic caused by our poor diet and unhealthy bodies? I think we are sitting ducks. Fast foods and antibiotics change the rules, really change the rules in America. You can't arbitrarily begin having people swallow poison, although tiny aliquots, tiny amounts, and believe that we're becoming healthier and healthier the more antibiotics we swallow. Um, how, having said that, there were miracles. Many people are alive today. I think it may have leveled off by now. There's a darker side to antibiotics. Someday I'll walk you through that. It's an ugly side to antibiotics. Um, and our medical community is not aware of that. They know that antibiotic stewardship has fallen by the wayside. They're not good at stopping antibiotics. It seems to be one of the tools they get away using on everybody all the time and uh, they haven't gotten away with it. They haven't. Good people, folks, but they learn in their medical training, the answer lies in your fr right front pocket. The answer is never, oh no, stop drinking if you have uric acid levels high, gout. No, no, don't stop drinking. Um, so, yeah, really good question. Should a healthy body be able to combat and fight most? Yes. This is the way the human immune system works. We went out, finally, there were nobody out at this table that we were sitting at, with some of the family uh, is gathered here. And so they had their kids, we had the grandkids, and uh, my son and his wife were there, and other people. And the kids went off and began playing in dirt, and the little boy fell and started crying, you know. And he's got mud all over himself. And then while he's crying, he sticks his finger. And I love the way people take, oh, no, 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 don't. It's the way you and I grew up. Exposure to antigens, an A-N-T-I-G-E-N. An antigen is anything capable of eliciting an immune response. The immune response varies, but we have a perfectly round lymphocyte called a B cell lymphocyte. It makes a mirror image of that chip of mud and bacteria. And in a two-year-old, harmless. Now, like I said in the women's book, he's got immunomemory. If there were 18 bacteria and 42 fungi that he just put into his mouth and uh, had a little scrape on his arm, um, he's now making antibodies to those. That's the way the human body should work. Isolating well people and telling them not to leave their homes. No, no, don't go to the beach where negative ions are coming off the waves, where the salt in the water is extremely therapeutic and in the sand. No, no, don't go in the sun. Remember, sunburn is going to kill you. Um, that's so illogical to me that it's borderline. It's very poor information from those of us uh, who are paid to make medical decisions. Any physician telling us to stay quarantined when this little guy just made antibodies to 48 different things. Yes, Becky, and you bring up it's the greatest question in the world. Um, how do I know if this is COVID? Folks, they can do a blood test. 
We, I started on this the other day. We have five protected antibodies. If you can remember, game D, IgG, the antibodies are also called immunoglobins, right? IgG, IgA, IgM, IgE, and IgD. The relevant ones here are IgM and IgG. IgE, we call the allergy antibody. We're launching an allergy response. IgA is secretory made antibodies. But IgM, if you take my blood and say, Doug, you have Epstein-Barr, how do you know? Well, I did a blood test for Epstein-Barr. Which antibodies did you test? Well, I tested IgG. And so I'm positive to IgG? Yeah. Folks, that don't get it done. IgM is what we call the initial, the initial antibody response is IgM. This virus has been around a few months. You would be making an IgM response first few weeks. So if you want to know if this sickness, and I don't know if they're using this, I doubt it, um, and you have a COVID positive patient, test it IgM and IgG. I don't think that information would be useful to them right now, and here's why. IgM converts to IgG antibodies. And IgG antibodies, no physician in the world can tell how long ago you were exposed to IgG antibodies. Could have been when you were six months old or one day old. You're born in a nosocomial environment, in a hospital moldy bacteria environment. As well as they try, and I have no ax to grind with hospitals, they got mold problems and they got bacterial problems because they have really, really moldy and bacterialized patients in there. So understand, if you want to know, I got a sore throat. Man, I'm running a low-grade fever. Oh, I'm so tired and I hurt so bad. I better get to the doc in the box, you know, which is probably where I'd go. Um, and I'd ask them, instead of doing the nasal thing, yeah, it's COVID, uh, I'd say, can you do a blood test? And would you do me a favor, test IgM and IgG? Um, if it comes back IgM positive, good for you. It's COVID, right? You've just been making antibodies a week or two, and so that's it. If it's IgG to COVID or SARS, it was years ago, you've had this thing for a long period of time, and that's not responsible for causing your symptoms. So if your doctor does a Candida albicam test on you, and it's IgG, and he comes back and says, yeah, no wonder you've got thrush and yeast problems all over, you've tested positive to Candida albicans. Can I see my test result? It's IgG. I could have had that when I was a day old. IgG just lives and lives and lives. If it's IgM positive to Candida albicans, bingo. No wonder this is growing all over my tongue. No wonder I put a Q-tip in and, it, and I wish I could pull it through. You know, it itches so bad. Um, so just a little bit on this testing and, uh, and thank you, Becky, for bringing that up. The way the human body should react and does till we're 45, maybe 50, uh, is it makes perfect antibodies to things you're exposed to. And then you carry that the rest of your life, okay? You have what we call immunorecognition and immunomemory. But if it's an IgM blood test of Epstein-Barr or COVID, um, brand new infection, brand new infection. Okay, hope that helps. Um, what do you feel about chiropractors? Uh, Natalie, I had a, uh, let me just really be honest, because you guys are like family to me. Uh, there's a woman that watches this all the time whose son graduated from chiropractic school. Really cool guy. And she sent me his curriculum. And I sat there and read that, and I just couldn't believe it. They get huge number of hours in nutrition, right? Whereas a doctor, a doctor can, a physician contends, well, I got a lot of, no, you got biochemistry. You got how bacon breaks down, you know, and how you assimilate it. You didn't get, you know, it's funny, when I eat bacon, I get migraine headaches, bingo, and chiropractors do. So I was really overwhelmed. Now, here's my ax to grind with chiropractors. I know you want to be called doctor. Do your profession and yourself the honor of saying, I'm Josh Axe, comma, DC, as Josh does. Um, be proud that you're a chiropractor. The name doctor to Doug Kaufman, mm, 
Um, and it differs from person to person. There are a lot of people who totally respect and trust doctors. Go for it, I'm, I'm with you. But there are other people who, when they see doctor, they run. Now, if you'd have said you're a chiropractor, I'll read that article or I'll listen to that tape. Be proud of your education. Don't just want to be called doctor, okay? There's so many, uh, so many chiropractors I wish would step forward, and this is the time to do it. The chiropractors beat the physicians at their own game in a lawsuit some years ago. These are good, smart, nutritionally sound people. If I have a health problem and I want to know more about diet and fungus, I'm seeing a chiropractor. I'm seeing a naturopathic doctor, an MD, okay? Um, you know, you don't go to a doctor to get your oil changed. And, you know, if I need my oil changed, I'm going to go to a, somebody that knows about that. So when it comes to nutrition, that's probably not. Don't scare us. Don't scare us. Stop it. Look what fear has done to us. It's got us to listen to you. That you're going to come up with a vaccine that will be mandated. Eh, may injure, may kill, but it's a vaccine nonetheless. Ain't going down that road. Just not. Okay? Um, I use things that are safe. I don't even like GMOs, right? I don't even like all the chemicals, the petrochemicals. I don't even, I didn't know my carrots were sprayed with corn. I'm learning all the time. Linda, if we could have your small support group and we could get people to visit it, I know you're not a doctor. I know you know after your journey a lot about health and nutrition and fungus. I'd be happy to give people that information. So good. What brand of uh, beta-glucan do I recommend? There's a lot of them out there. Beta-1316-glucan. Beta-1316-glucan is the one I recommend. And I'm also going to tell you that beta, we, have, we have what we call receptor sites on our cells for beta-glucan. Okay, But most beta-glucan on the market, I've heard, is much too large to stick in to the receptor site. Pretend this is a catcher's mitt. Here comes the ball. So what the beta-glucan company I recommend, and that is people who advertise on my show, it's called nsc24.com, Nancy Sam Charles, nsc24.com, and they'll send you some free. A lot of you guys have got it free. Um, they have shaved it. They do this at the University of Nevada in big medical settings. They have shaved it. Now it's hanging on and protecting your immune cells. They're the only ones I know that do that. Did you guys know that oatmeal, the glue when you mix water and oats, that glue is beta-glucan, right? But beta-1316 glucan, there are a lot of good ones out there. Somebody pays me money every month to advertise, the NSC24 company does, to advertise on my television show. Now, if you've got a problem with that, find a beta-glucan that's beta-1316-glucan, preferably one that's micronized. But Frank will send you some free and let you try it. Um, so, just so you know. Martha says, I received my cookbook. Just wondering, is almond yogurt okay on the Kaufman One Diet? Is there an almond yogurt? We eat um, goat yogurt. Almond yogurt. I didn't know there was an almond yogurt. Okay, think about it. If there's no dairy, I'm worried about, you know, lactose. If there's no dairy, but almond wouldn't freeze like that. I don't know the answer to that. I didn't know there was an almond. Can one of you guys do the search for me and uh, let Martha know? Her name is Martha. Receive my cookbook. Just wondering, is almond yogurt okay on the Kaufman One diet? I don't know the answer, but I'm sure you're going to get help. Okay, for every month, wow, Chris, for every month I've been away from mold, I've gained back more of my health. Others are blind to it. You can't make someone see clarity who finds comfort in their own fog. That's my new bumper sticker, Chris. Now, all of you watching right now and who will watch today, tomorrow, over the weekend, uh, thousands of you, Chris just made my point in opening today. 
instead of worrying about if we're going to stand in line, can you imagine how long the line will be for 330 million people waiting for a vaccine? Oh, I saw the funniest, let me finish this thought, Ruth would say. Um, it, it, as, as long as we hear that you're only quarantined sick people, as long as we hear you need a mask, no, you don't. You know what the new one was, you guys? I, I read it and just started belly laughing. The new one is, for some reason, if this is a conspiracy, man, it's a great one. They measured how far my sneeze spit goes. Oh, it's 1725 feet, and don't touch that table. Well, now they've said, well, that sneeze spit isn't contagious. Wear a mask? I don't think so. Don't wear a mask, you're going to jail. I mean, confusion is so deep. I don't want to go there. It's causing too much stress. Got all these doctors for, all these doctors against, and I'm not a doctor guy, okay? So to me, this is ping pong. I don't care. I'm well, I'm trying to teach people how to get well, but I asked myself in bed the other night when the grandkids were down, what do they need to learn? How to keep your immune system well. Nobody said it better. Doug, I, Chris is saying, I've gained back more of my health. Others are blind to it. Coronavirus, totally blinded by it. And I'm in the healthcare field, okay? Folks, you talk about I was so happy to see the New York firemen shooting hoses in the air when nurses and doctors got off work. Where was that when I came back from Vietnam? Where was that? You know, you're in weird situation out there in the field in Vietnam. You got people shooting at you, torrential downpour, guy with a neck wound, a sucking chest wound. No fire department for me when I got home. As a matter of fact, we were spat on. We were loathed by Americans. So I, I'm one of those guys who really has a rough time saluting the medical force out there. They're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. And you get a great paycheck, okay? The sad thing is how many are losing jobs right now. But you know what, John? This opens up for them an opportunity. And I hope they're watching this show. These are credentialed people who should go to doctors who are losing 80% of their patients and saying, I know how to keep your patients here. I think we're all heroes, folks. I think the mom raising an autistic child is my hero, okay? Um, I, we use that word so lightly. We throw it around so much. What are you looking at, John? Now, Am I remember I? we were talking today about when we were kids, we played in mud and yeah. dirt and then the ponds and the... John, uh, John grew up in Kansas, I grew up in LA, and it was fairly common, John and his brothers and sisters made a, when it rained, had a big mud pool and he was telling me they all ran. We didn't have those slip and slide things then, the grass became the slip and slide, and they'd go head first into mud and their mothers would laugh, ha ha ha, come on in, you're all gonna take a bath. Yeah, you build dams, dam up the, uh, that's the way the immune system should work. Um, I just, I don't know. Um, you know, there are heroes in all of this. The family that didn't get to say goodbye to loved ones, heroes, okay? Um, you know, we've all had tough times in life, and I guess I've still got a chip on my shoulder that when we got home, we were told to hush up. Don't tell anybody you were in Vietnam. What? There were guys with arms missing that I helped. There were helicopters landing. It was such a madhouse when the shooting started. No fire truck shooting water when I got home. And I guess I still have a bit of chip uh, on my shoulder when I see doctors and nurses earning huge amounts of money, doing their job, uh, being held heroes. You know, it's their job. And I respect the fact that many of you guys know something weird's going on and you're holding it inside. Because that was me 50 years ago. Now, something weird's going on. This is a controversial war. I don't want to die in it. Okay? Uh, so, good. Thank you, Chris. That's a home run. Others are blind to it. Let them be. Doug, do you have any recommendations for a person in early 40s with exams, test assessments at the moment? Need the help with memory, please. Uh, thank you, and Lord bless you. Maria, the first thing I would do, we helped a company launch it was called Prevagen, right? 
it's the it's a synthetic version of the protein that illuminates a jellyfish. You see the ads on TV all the time. We're where they started. Know the cause, you know, 10, 15 years ago, something like that. And they're still good friends. If I was having memory problems, um, I would start by going to any uh, pharmacy, picking up a bottle of Prevagen or two. Some people used to tell me that it took a month you know, 20 days to 40 days to start noticing, oh my gosh, my memory is really coming back. I also like phosphatidylserine. It's called PS in a health food store. A phosphatidylserine is also good at helping memory come back. Use one or the other. I'd use uh, Prevagen for two months. If you don't feel tremendous response, then PS, phosphatidylserine, for a couple of months. Uh, and remember, most importantly, Maria, diet. What did you learn this morning or this afternoon? Are you eating grains? Any grains? Are you eating mold? Is mold neurotoxic? Yeah. Have you been on lots of antibiotics? Yeah. If that were the case, then your memory would start slipping. You may have tremors of Parkinson's. Um, and probiotics would probably be the way to go. I wish, when I read questions like this, I wish I could become Maria for 60 days. And Maria could become an old man, you know, a 70-year-old guy who, with the exception of working out this week, which didn't happen, uh, who feels this good. And I'd give you back, Maria, 60 days from now. Maria, here's what I learned. The antibiotics you took when you were a little girl, okay, you needed probiotics. And I learned that Prevagen helped from day 10. You know, I, I take the larger dose, and from day 10, it helped you. So continue on. See you, Maria. Don't drink alcohol, you know. Good. Um, Beth, it's my friend Beth. She comes up with the greatest ones. Doug, I haven't worn makeup for months. My skin is so clear now. Uh, Mark asks, can mycotoxins in the gut be the cause of anxiety? Yeah. Let me tell you the two mycotoxins that you and I, Mark, are so constantly exposed to, and they're both neurotoxic. And when I gave this lecture to this group of 300 physicians, it was so great. Doctors have always questioned if alcohol was a mycotoxin and neurotoxic. My answer is, tonight, when we end this symposium, go home and drink 10 beers. See me at 8 in the morning, and let's talk about it. Let's see if it's neurotoxic. Antibiotics and alcohol. Common billions of prescriptions for antibiotics. Sad to say, there's an addiction going on here. Right pocketitis. Wow. RPI. Right pocketitis. Doctors are writing prescriptions for antibiotics without knowing, because they're not going to teach them in medical school, what the downside to antibiotics are. Okay, and then alcohol. Guys, when we got 21, I got back in Vietnam. I was 21 years old. What do you think I did? Right? I was so wait a minute, I just did this, and now these people hate me, and they're writing, in the LA Times, they're writing bad stories about we Vietnam, you know, I was so confused, alcohol helped, took away, you know, the edge of all of that. So yeah, can mycotoxins in the gut cause anxiety? No way it can't. I will give you an emphatic yes, based on science. Avoid mycotoxins, maybe take Diflucan, which is anti-yeast, Sporinox, which is anti-dermatophytes and other fungi, uh, for a month, follow the Kaufman One Diet, and Mark, you'll be able to answer that yourself. I read aspirin is antiviral. Alpha lipoic acid help with cancer. Sure, ALA. Um, so this is another one that's salt, right? Don't salt your meat. No, salt your meat. You need salt. Don't salt. Uh, uh, you know, don't eat eggs. Oh, no, eat eggs. You know, it's so crazy. These are the people we turn to naked and say, help me get better. Um, we've got a lot of learning to do. Aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid, ASA. Uh, it's from a tree. And so, therefore, it has antimicrobial properties, antiviral at very least, antifungal, antibacterial. Um, good questions. Wow. Doug, uh, as a nurse, I would love to take some of your courses. Wow, thank you so much. 
wonder if I should... John, we once said we have 22 years of shows on television. They had to be accepted by networks to get on TV, so they had to be referenced from the scientific literature, something Natalie would love. I've got to do that before I get too old. Okay, so Jane, after 37 years of insomnia, I'm sleeping better since I started taking omega-3 at night. I don't remember where I learned it, but it's working for me. Yay! I'm, uh, I sleep deeper, uh, also four hours instead of two, and I fall back to sleep easily. Um, you know, with kids, Jane, with the kids, the grandkids in the house, my wife and I find we don't sleep soundly at all. We go back 35 years to when our kids were small. And I don't know if a mom or dad, I figured out why God gives you children at 20 and not 70, you know. Um, but any movement, they have a little futon there in the bedroom, and any movement, like turn over, you know, we both jump, or I saw her get up the other night just to go cover them up, make sure they weren't too cold. I mean, it's so great to have the kids around. Omega-3 fatty acids, so fatty acids, like caprylic acid, it's a harmless coconut oil-derived fatty acid. Omega-3, fatty acid fish oil, these kill fungus. And so taking it before you go to bed, that might be one of the reasons that you're sleeping so calmly now. But we have an old saying in Texas, Jane, when you find a good horse, you ride it. You found the right product, the right time to take it, and you're enjoying its benefits. Gary says, every time my grandkids go to the doctor, Gary and I are in the same boat here, they give them prescribed antibiotics. Duh. D Gary, does that bother you? They are robots for drug companies. And that really, I take, I take issue with that. I'm really angry at that. I gave them some black elderberry liquid, good for you, and gave my son your letter, the fungus link and prescribing antifungals medication to give to the doctors in Reno. Reno is such a cool town. Some of my family lives in Minden, Gary, you know, right around the corner there. And when we get up, you know, the mountains, the snow, Reno, you guys, if you haven't been to Reno, you got to go. So a black elderberry liquid, of course, antimicrobial. That's why it helps so many kids. I'm like you, Gary. I am so distraught with antibiotic factories. But they'll keep churning out graduates as long as those graduates keep reaching into their right pocket. Um, B-complex makes me a horrible person. I can't take it. Even the food-based supplements, I can't take B12 and niacin. Any idea? I wonder, Jane, if you have to, uh, if you're toxic and you have to detox. Have you ever done sweating? Have you ever sat in a far or a near infrared sauna? Detox for a month. Get on the right diet, you know, for a month. And uh, see if then your levels don't stabilize to where... They seem like toxic reactions. Guys, I have to go. I did it. I'm not 70 years old. I told my wife this morning I'm not 70. I feel like I'm 80. Uh, but this weekend, I'm going to go back to 50 years old again. God bless you. Thank you for telling a friend about this show. And I'll see you Tuesday at 3 p.m. Central Time. Take care.